Go ahead and reopen Mandala.ai, and we'll work on that one more time. I'm going to move my Layers panel over here again. In the previous lesson, we looked at the individual options for a layer. So every layer can be controlled the way you want that layer to react. Print, not print, template, whatever you want it to do. But the Layers panel also has, in a sense, overall options that control the layers in general for the document. Let's look at those. Up here, right there, click that button. Actually, we have Flowers layer selected. You want something selected. I'm going to click here, and you get all this stuff. Now, the first one, basically, you don't have to be here to do new layer. If you want a new layer, just click this button right down here, and you will make a new layer. The difference is, if you click this one, it will open up the options for you. We talked about the options in the previous lesson. What's a sublayer? Well, let me show you something. If you open up any one of these layers with this triangle right here, you will see, or begin to see, drilling down into the elements that make up those actual pieces. Now, in the flowers, I did group them. So each one of these is a group, and if I open the group, you're now looking at all the pieces that make up just one of those flowers, from here all the way back up to here. You could potentially have hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces going on inside that layer. Those are sublayers. Now, if I close this out just for a second, collapse it back out, and I select flowers, and I want to create a sublayer inside there. To be honest with you, I don't do that very often, but if I wanted to, I would select the layer and click here and then say, New Sublayer. Now there it is, right there. There's nothing in it yet, and there's our options automatically open telling us, well, what do you want to do? Now I'm going to cancel out, don't want to do that. And let me go ahead and collapse this back out. That's a sublayer. Come back over here again. Actually, let me select something first, that would help. Come back over here again, and go into maybe Options for Flowers. Now that's the options for the flower that we talked about in the previous lesson. You can get them here too if you want to. We will talk about clipping mask, but not in this chapter, so we're going to skip that one. What's Isolation Mode? We've already talked about that. I am in the Flowers layer. I want to isolate the Flowers layer and work on just those flowers. I want to isolate myself. Isolation Mode, you click it. It grays out everything, which is cool. That way you can see it, you can use it in terms of, well, maneuvering, changing position, but you're only working, as you can see in the Layers panel, on that particular layer. But there is an easier way to do this. Let me come back here and say Exit. If you come over here with your Selection Tool and you want to work on that flower and you want to go into Isolation Mode, double-click on it. Instant Isolation Mode. You want to get out of it, you can do it right up here. Now this area is only there because we are in isolation mode. And I can back myself back down to here and get all the way out eventually. Or if I'm working on something, I can double click over here and get back out. Now it doesn't mean you can't use that. It's just that I think it's easier to do it this way. Now I had a student one time ask me this question. He said, Andy, I understand isolation mode, but I never use it. And I'm always double clicking on something, accidentally getting into isolation mode. I know I can double click outside of it or actually press the escape key and get out of it. But is there a way to turn that off? We wouldn't be having this conversation if there wasn't a way to do it. Go into your preferences. That's edit in Windows and on a Macintosh, go to Illustrator and go into general preferences. Double click to isolate. If you turn that off, now I use it, so I'm going to leave it on and the default is on. But if you don't want to use it, you can turn it off. That means the only way you can get to it would be from the pull-down menu. So let's go back up here again. You have what's called Locate Object. Now remember, there are zillions of things going on on these subpaths. Let's say we come back out here again and select this guy right here. Actually, we have to do that with the Direct Selection tool, sorry, because those are in a group. I want to find not the other ones. That's fine similar. I want to find where that one exists in all those hundreds and millions of paths. So I select it, I come over here, and I go down to Locate Object, and it will open it up and show me there it is, way over here. And once I've got it, I can turn it on, off. I can lock it if I want to for some reason. I have control, but there's an easier way to do that. Let me go ahead and collapse it back out of here again. Let's say I do want to find this guy right here. Click this button. That's the Locate Object button, and it will do the same thing. So it's a little bit quicker. A lot of the stuff here 
can be done somewhere in the actual panel. Let me go ahead and collapse that out and continue our journey of discovery. Let me select flowers. Back up again. If I have leaves and backdrop as layers selected, I can say merge selected. It will leave flowers and pretties alone. I can flatten the artwork. We did that earlier. Everything goes into one layer. The name of the layer will be the layer that you had selected when you did it. And we can even collect in a new layer. So we can say, I want this and this and this in a new layer. Click on those, select them, and say collect in a new layer. Now down here we have release to layers in a sequence or release to layers in a build. So let me show you something. Let's open up flowers again right here. You got all these different groups. If I come over here and say release to layers, it takes them out as a sub layer and releases them to that layer. Let me go ahead and undo that. Just gives you more control if you want to work with them that way. The other one is same idea. Let me select flowers so you can see that. It will release them into a build and then you can, if you want to, reverse the order. Now you have a button here to turn that layer into a template. You can do that from the options. You've got hide others. Now watch what happens when I do that with the flowers layer selected. Well, it hides everything. It turns off all the show buttons right here. Let me go ahead and go back up there again and say show. There's a much easier way to do that. If you're working on leaves and you want to hide everything but leaves, Hold down the Alt key, that's the Option key on a Mac, Alt key in Windows, and click the Show Hide button, and it will hide everything but leaves. Do it again with the same key, and it'll bring everything back for you. Come back up here again. We have Outline Others. I like that one. Now watch again, Leaves. It will outline everything but leaves. It gives you a physical or a visual look of exactly what you're doing without the distraction of the colors and information, and you can keep working. Let me go ahead and go back up there again and tell the computer to preview all layers. Now there is a shortcut for that one too. If you want to outline everything but say pretties, come over here, but before you click, that's just going to turn them on and off. Hold down the Alt key and the Control key in Windows or the Option key and the Command key on Mac and then click. Same thing. Click again, same two keys, it comes right back for you. Let's go ahead and go back to Flowers and come back up here again. You have an option to lock everything but the layer you have selected. Okay, let me unlock those. But again, there's a shortcut for that. If you want to lock everything but the layer you're working on, hold the Alt key when you click here. That's the Option key on a Mac, Alt key in Windows, and it does the same thing. Do it again, unlocks everything. Just an easier way to get to it. Then, if you come down one more time, we have Paste Remembers Layers. Pasting remembers layers. Let's do this. Let's come over here and create a new document. I'm going to draw an object and I'm going to choose a star, whatever. And let's give it a color and let's give that the name star. Okay, so I have a document that has a layer or layers in it and I want to move that document with that layer into another document that I have. So I select the actual star and go up the word edit and say copy. Okay, so phase one. Now we go back to this one. Watch what happens if I just do an edit paste. It will paste the star into whatever layer is selected when you do the paste. You might want to do that. It's no big deal. Let me undo that. Now come back over here and say paste remembers layers. You can see there's a little check mark next to it now. Now do a paste. Watch what happens. It remembers it was in a layer in another document. It gives you the layer. It keeps its name. Paste remembers layers. Let me get rid of that one. And let me go ahead and turn that off. Now there is one more thing. If we come back out and go into panel options. In panel options, you can control things like the size of the rows. Okay, make those bigger, you know, if you want to. You can go into your thumbnails for layers and say top level only. You can say thumbnails for your groups and objects, turn those on and off. This one right here though, show layers only. Turn that on and then watch what goes on over here. Okay, you are in a sense back in Legacy Illustrator. Back years ago when we only had the layer itself and we didn't have control of the sub layers. Now you can still get to stuff. We can still do things but we don't have the control if we want it by expanding the layer out. 
Let's go ahead and go back there, go into panel options, and turn that one, for me anyway, off. Go ahead and click OK. Well, that's about it. Those are the options for the Layers panel that control the document itself, and the individual layers can be controlled also. Control is an important thing in a program as complicated as Adobe Illustrator.